welcome and uh, welcome to this edition of Behind the Headlines. My name is Charles Odongso and uh, welcome back to the show. Um, this Wednesday, the 13th of uh, April 2022 and uh, just two or three days away from uh, Easter and uh, we want to wish all of you um, a good one. And uh, today we are going to be looking at the security situation in Karamoja. Someone joked as I was coming in that is it the security or the insecurity situation. But we will be discussing, um, you know, all those uh, dynamics, the, what, what is going on in Karamoja currently. The stories we are getting from there is not so good. Um, there is a lot of rustling, there is a lot of raiding of cattle going on. And of course, there are various accusations and allegations of um, human rights violations, and we will be looking into all those. And to discuss all those, let me start from my far left. We have the Army spokesperson, Brigadier General Felix Kulaije. He is here with us in the studio. General, you're most welcome back. Thank you, Charles, and uh, I beg to correct you the title has changed to, <laughs> to defense spokesperson defense wow. spokesperson yes not army spokesperson when you say army you have excluded the inf the air force okay defense and uh, yet i'm a staff officer of the minister himself okay so the title is defense spokesperson and thank you and good evening viewers and my colleagues on the panel and i want to welcome you back from the uh, sending off of your Long time friend. Oh, <laughs> my friend. Was, I knew those your stories from Makere University. You know, I'm, 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 I'm in his biography. Oh. He sent his biographer to me yeah. as one of his best friends. Wow. I used to, whenever I would be with him and uh, I would meet you in parliament, you would be sharing your stories <laughs> of uh, that uh, group that you helped disperse. Disperse. <laughs> He dispersed Olanya's group when they were in campus. <laughs> the ideological, what was it, ideological? What? You see, you see, when you know the path you have used, eh? uh, and you see your opponent is trying to use the same path, you must put erect barriers in that path. <laughs> <laughs> One day I was with him in parliament, and I was with the speaker, and then when he was still deputy, and then the general Kulaija came by, and then they said, hey, you remember the other one? You remember what you did to me? <laughs> <laughs> These guys made my day in those days. But welcome back. Thank you. Um, and uh, um, I also want to welcome to the studio uh, behind the headlines for the first time uh, here on this show, uh, Honorable Faith Nakut. She is a woman MP for NAPAC in Karamoja. Thank you very much. Good Charles. to see you, Faith. Good to see you too. I've heard so much about you. Um, okay. It's a pleasure today to meet you in person. Thank you. Yes, and uh, hope that we will have a good show with you. I hope so. Uh, yes, and uh, next to the Honorable Faith is um, the a panelist on this show, Honorable Ojara Mapenduzi, is MP for Bardege Laibi in Gulu City. Honorable Wafoyo. Yes. Thank you. Welcome back. And uh, Honorable, um, Honorable Mapenduzi hosted us last week um, when we went for the burial of the speaker in, uh, in Omoro, and he hosted us in Gulu, and several other MPs, call, MP colleagues of his. And he has changed his looks. Oh. You haven't seen the beard. <laughs> 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 I haven't seen. Uh, yes, yes. Sarah is is focusing on different things. <laughs> <laughs> I have been putting on mask all this period, so don't worry. <laughs> but yeah. but honourable, you didn't hear. He said that honourable Mapenduzi has has changed his looks, mm -hmm. courtesy of the new beard. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a specialty for ladies. <laughs> ah, <laughs> Finally, we have here the old <laughs> Doctor Sarah Birete, and she is a, a lawyer and. Uh, and uh, executive director of the Center for Constitutional Governance. Sarah, uh, for those of you who missed last week, Sarah is now, since two weeks ago, she's now a PhD. Now we call her doctor. Hey. Congratulations, and, uh, Sarah Combs. Yes. Thank you. Combs. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, 
We are expecting the Honorable Musa Echweru, the Minister in charge of uh, Minister of State at uh, Ministry of Works. He is supposed to be joining us. He confirmed uh, that he will be joining us. We, um, Honorable, if you're listening in as and when uh, you can come in, kindly know that we are waiting for you. We are expecting you on the show, but the show must begin. So let me start with uh, let me start with the Honorable. Um, faith um, coming from the region. Um, Karamoja, you know, a population of 1.3, 1.2 something million people and uh, nine districts has been bedeviled by lots of, uh, a lot of insecurity lately. And in the, in the early 2000s, you know, the um, cattle rustling had come down. It had actually been knocked off. And now everybody is wondering what has brought this back again? What is exactly happening? And how can this situation, or will it be resolved? What is the latest currently as we talk? Thank you, Charles. Maybe I need to go back to 20, the early 2000s, as you've said. From 2005 mm. up to 2010, the UPDF did an excellent job. I want to commend you okay. for the disarmament exercise that was successful, very successful. At that time, there was a bargain. There were several meetings, and our people were asking government, what are you going to do to protect us? if we give you the guns. We are not having these guns as toys. We are using them for protection. And so government said, okay, you give us the guns, leave the protection to me. Other people accepted. They gave their guns willingly. And those who never gave willingly, because some gave willingly, some did not give willingly, those who never gave willingly were forced. There was a forceful disarmament also. And so the people believed that, yes, government cannot lie. They will take care of our security. 2010 came and the guns were no more. They were silent. We tried to, 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 to prove whether it would be so. In 20, 2011, we had a new set of criminals beginning these ones, we are, we are moving to people's homes with bottles like this and, and bang them as if it, and with the sound of a gun, as if it is a bullet, and then tease people and get their get property. There was that threat in 2011. We reported it to government, and government responded. At that time, recruited a number of uh, LDUs to take care of the people, and we settled. 2012, we enjoyed peace up to 2018. So we, th we did not expect insecurity to come back to the region. Actually, at that time, Karamoja was the most peaceful place in Uganda that you would want us to, to hide from if you wanted safety. Kar Kampala was more insecure than Karamoja was. And so we saw peace, we have tested. That period alone is enough to give me the confidence that the capacity to end the current conflict still exists. Now, in 2018, there was a big, big mistake. The forces that were helping to protect, you know, the contract of protection had been signed. Bring me the, give me the guns and I give you protection. And the forces were there. They were protecting the girls. They were protecting the people. They were, the, the presence of the forces in the region was visible. Mm. There was a mistake in 2018. Which mistake we acknowledge as government? What was the mistake? The mistake was removing the forces, taking them to help pacify other countries. Now, the criminal elements... I understand when there is space offered to them. Space was available. In 2018, the criminal elements started to strike. Hit one person, 
still uh, raid 20 cows, raid 100 cows. When, when people reported the incidences to the forces for rescue, you report to police. The police say, ah, that's not our area. Take it to the military. The military, they, they had limited presence. Even if they were willing to respond, the numbers were not adequate. We saw, we saw the criminal elements running over protected kraals. Protected kraals, even when in the presence of the military, they would still come and run over. I witnessed one in, in December, to, uh, Christmas Day 2020. Mm -hmm. Criminal mm -hmm. elements ran over a protected kraal. I saw dead bodies of soldiers, four dead bodies. And they went made off with cows, several cows. I went there personally to see. Now, the situation escalated. We saw peace actors being killed. What do you mean peace actors? Peace, peace actors, so there were chairmen, peace committees. Mm. We saw them being killed, another was killed in Kotid, another in Morote, another in Napak. Nearly every district lost uh, somebody who is responsible for peace or somebody who was midwife who was telling them please bring back your guns government will protect you it was like an annoyance mm. you told us to give our guns and we oh. that we should be protected and now we are not I, I assume that is one reason but I also assume that they were killed because somebody was saying okay let's eliminate these ones to allow way for criminality to, to clarify, escalate. To escalate. There are many reasons why this, mm -hmm. but we saw anybody who preached peace, many of them got killed in cold blood. Now, unfortunately, when they were killed, not much was seen or, or even done to apprehend the killers. So the situation is. When they come and kill, where do they run to? Back to? No, the problem is you, you cannot trace. The, the problem with the tracing where they ran to, if it was easier, then we would have arrested the criminals. Mm. The fact that the many criminals are at large and have continued doing the same thing repeatedly means we are unable to track them mm -hmm. very well. So in, in, that, in 2020, the situation, it started small and it continued to increase. Mm. 2021, the killings continued now. even tripled. I remember in my district of Dampak, in one month of January 2021, we lost 24 lives in cold blood. And these ones were killed even in their houses. So the people decided to demonstrate on what they called the Napak is bleeding. Mm -hmm. They attempted to demonstrate and when they did, government responded. I remember the CDF came to Moroto and called all of us, the elected leaders in, 20, in, in February, mm -hmm. called us for a meeting. In a meeting we had in Moroto, we explained, I actually ended in a dozier of what was going on and what should be done to solve the problem. I was hopeful, and because the CDF then gave me hope that he would be, we would take responsibility, he even apologized. I said we would now manage this situation, and I was convinced that the situation was going to be managed in the region. I didn't know it would escalate. By that time, places in South Karamoja, Nakapripit, um, Nabilatuk, Amudat, were 100% peaceful. The insecurity was in Kabong, Kot Kotido, Napak, and Moroto. Mm. That was February 2021. Last year. Yes. One year ago. Yes, and we gave all reasons why action should be taken urgently. Unfortunately, which I think is responsible for the escalation of what we are going through now. In that meeting we had in Moroto, one of the generals made a comment and said that why are you why are you complaining or making too much noise over the death of 24 people in one month previously you used to lose about 400 people per day so why are you 
So that alone has made me think that, okay, perhaps because the numbers were not that huge, so it explains the inaction, so that the numbers increase uh, to a point where government can now feel the pain of the people. I do not know whether we have reached that level now. Because that, uh, according to, to, to that communication, the, the numbers were too few to warrant an action. So that makes me really wonder how many people should die for an action to be taken. How many, how, how many cows should be lost? These are assets of our people. Many of them don't have, don't have money that they can take to a bank like us who have, they have had the privilege of going to, to school. These ones, their entire assets are in their cows. That's their money, that's their bank. So when you lose your entire bank, I, I can imagine if somebody dare touch my bank account now, I can imagine what I will do to the banker. Okay. That is exactly what has happened in Karamita. Now the situation has escalated. How is it by today? You could have got the latest update. Uh, by today, there is a, a, a raid in a, everywhere, in every district. There is a raid, there is a killing. We are, we are no longer counting even who is dying. As of, as of last week, we had, we, our, our, our estimate of deaths had, reached, had exceeded 3,000 people. Actually, 3,020. Are these raiders or are these the rustlers being killed or ordinary now we are counting Ugandans being killed. We are counting both those, who, uh, those who criminal elements who go and get killed. We are counting those innocent Ugandans who get killed in their houses, whom somebody just comes and kills you without any, any reason. We are also counting the UPDF soldiers who have killed. Who are being, who are who are, being killed. Who are, who are being killed in yeah. cold blood. Okay. So these people are all Ugandans. We should be able to count to count the, uh, the people that we are losing. Okay. So how many more should we really lose to take action? Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, Charles, Charles, Charles I, I need information. Honorable, uh, Honorable Kulaije, um, never mind if I call you Honorable because they say once a on, an Honorable, Forever. always one. So yes. take it as one of those honors given to you. Um, in your career. Um, uh, as, long as, you as long as you don't call me corporal, there's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I know those ones. Uh, I would rather call you a major general <laughs> than a, 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 a colonel. Uh, I was teasing you, don't worry. Yes, yes. it's okay. Um, you are the defense spokesperson and uh, you have heard what the Honorable has given us as, uh, as uh, an introduction to what is going on. Um, and she has asked many questions which are pertinent and as a UPDF we need to respond to how many people must first be killed before this situation can be done. But start from what she says that in 2018 a mistake was made. Was it a mistake? Did you make that mistake as the UPDF as, gov as, as in charge of security? Before I answer your question, this, she mentioned about a protected crowd. Yeah. That was overrun. Yes. Which place was this honorable? It was in Lope in Napa, Kailikong, in Lope. I went there in Lope. physically, yes. And I, there was a protected crowd? There was a, there was a crowd. That was December 24th, we are, we, December, 24th of December 2020. 2020. I saw four dead bodies of UPDF soldiers and seven others of criminals. I saw them. Okay. That I needed that information. Yeah. First of all, Charles, to answer your question directly, circumstances will determine the way you deploy your troops. Yeah. She has rightly told you, peace reigned in Karamoja between 2009 and 2018. Am I quoting you right, Honorable? 2012. She said 2012. Mm. 2018. 18. Yeah. That one I'm very sure of. The uh, uh, ended in 2010. 2009. Officially. I, I, I was the spokesman then. I, okay. I, 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 I kept track of things going on. Okay. And um, before you come to 2018, what transpired in this peaceful time? In my humble view, for us to appreciate uh, exactly 
what has led to this escalation of the cattle thefts and some occasions that's why in the peaceful time there was a, a fundamental change in Karamoja. Trade in cattle emerged. Yes. I remember in 2012 I was driving from Kotido mm -hmm. through Abim. And I came following lorries loaded. Goats, sheep, cows. And at that rate, I actually commented, I told my driver, I said that this rate, Karamoja is going to run out of cattle. Because the trade was simply booming. What was the consequence? As cattle was leaving, faster than it is reproducing itself, there was a need for more cattle to trade. Right? So small thefts were taking place, but there were no loss of lives. But two, as Shiraiji put it, whereas we were busy disarming, our neighbors in Kenya did not disarm. Our neighbors in South Sudan did not disarm. And like I found she was telling you, in, in, in South Sudan, guns are sold in the open market. Sure. In fact, bullets are heaped like you're heaping uh, potatoes. Like genuts. Like genuts. So, these now became a source for those who gained the appetite for money, yet they didn't have the cows to sell. So, guns permeated through our porous borders. Two, when the Turkanas would come across the border to graze their cattle during dry season, some sneaked in with guns. And so our people from Karamoja, those with criminal intentions, had access to guns. Now, to answer your question, did we make a mistake in 2018? Yeah. No. The operation situation, the, the situation on the ground did not warrant such a presence of the military mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. Yet they were needed elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, I mean, circumstances will determine True. how you utilize your resources. True. So indeed gaps emerged. Regrettably. Gaps emerged and the criminals exploited them. But there's something else we also need to uh, point out. The methods we used previously, since they paid the dividends, we revived them when the theft started. The disarmament committees. These uh, wonderful people she talked about who used to convince people indeed became victims in an attempt to undermine the, the whole concept of surrendering your gun. Mm. Uh, and of course, some of course claimed it was revenge, the others who told us, therefore, they killed them. Yes and no. Uh, the fact is, if one is a criminal and you are opposed to criminality, certainly become the objective target. Yeah. So, today, we are addressing those gaps that were created by the redeployment. And, uh, I may also say the media world brought this current situation we are talking about. Because before the death of the geologists, not much was being talked about Karamoja. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But there was a real situation on the ground. And we have been dealing with the situation to ensure. Can I that tell you, Charles, why the media house was not bringing it out? That's right. Let, let him first okay. finish, and then I'll ask you to bring that point. Okay. I can take her information. You want, okay. I can first. take her information. Go, go for it. <laughs> go for it. Order of offense, go for it. All right. Information granted. There is, if you say there is a problem of mindset change in Karamoja, or mindset, and you so we require the Karamojans to have a mindset change, I would think the rest of Uganda needs a mindset change much more in regard to what they know about Karamoja. One reason what we know, why the media did not bother to capture the story in Karamoja, even though they were seeing dead bodies. For a fact, nearly everybody who has a smartphone in Karamoja posted a picture of a dead Ugandan. But it never came on mainstream. 
The reason is people are thinking, many Ugandans think, this is a Karamoja thing. So, so let them kill themselves. There is nothing to, sh to prove that we love the lives of the people in Karamoja in the way we love the lives of other Ugandans. So when the criminals, who even, by the way, according to the report from the UPDF, were not Karamojongs, they're from the neighborhood. The criminals killed the geologists, but they had already killed many other Karamojongs because the pain had extended to the rest of the Ugandans, the most important Ugandans. So now we, feel, we felt the pain as a country. Honorable. Yes. Before you begin to talk about mind change about Ugandans, there, you go. there are a number of things that have happened even to us in okay. Karamoja, and we have kept quiet. <laughs> Charles, in, you know, in the words of the letter Ronda, for peace any price is paid, will be paid. We called for a meeting in 2000 in Kotido, and they were, we were told to go unarmed. Our officers went for a meeting in Panyangara. Guess what happened? They were all moored down. And we kept quiet about it. Why? Are, they, are, are those lives not painful? Of course they are. So why did we keep quiet? We take the blame for believing that we are supposed to be the ultimate sacrifice for peace reign in this country. <laughs> you have... <laughs> so as far as honorable faith is concerned, you have been complicit in that silence. And... Uh, no, no, no. You see, Charles... Yes. When you are dealing with Ugandans and they kill your own, do you climb the mountain and shout about it? Your own people have killed your own troops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, sir, <laughs> between Sarah and Mapenduza, I don't know who wants to come first, but Sarah, oh. you have raised your hand. Um, <laughs> pick it from where they have left it. The complicity, you know, the, this complicity in the silence, this um silence which is eventually leading to escalation and is eventually contributing to more uh, disaster more loss of lives and all this um, but also on the allegations of you know the human rights violations how how can we balance this because it appears now yes from reports the UPDF are being killed, the local ordinary people are being killed, peace builders or peace, um, actors. you know, um, peace actors. actors are being killed, you know, then the raiders are being killed. In that, it is real war now. And, you know, the truth is suffering, so we don't even now know where to start from. How do we resolve this? Yeah, I think all lives matter. True. Whether it's UPDF, whether it is a cattle wrestler, whether it is the jurists who were cleared by the, 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 the Tulkana the and Pokot. Mm -hmm. All lives are important and no life should be taken okay. in, in such a situation. So, but we have institutions and, 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 and I understand where faith is coming from. We have institutions and the duty of security agencies is, is to protect Ugandans and their property. So the cry of the MPs and leaders from Karamoja is, look, why are we not being protected? Are we not Ugandan enough? Yeah, and if you can hear how she concluded that uh, the, the country seems not to be bothered until other people who are none, Kalma Jong, were killed. One of the girls who lost lives happens to come from my village. But, but uh, Edna, may, may, may you rest in peace. And everybody else as well who has been a victim. So it shouldn't be that we should act when people we know are insecure, are murdered. We should be bothered when a life of any Ugandan is taken in such circumstances. From the human rights perspective, we've been crying, <laughs> you know, for, 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 for justice for peace, for end of brutality. And that covers human rights violations in Karamoja. It covers human rights violations in Kampala. It covers human rights violations in Kasese. It covers all these other extrajudicial killings that are happening in this country. The exception for Karamoja is that it has gone on forever. 
Whereas people take cattle rustling to the time of, you know, the fall of Idamin, when the soldiers fled from Moroto barracks and then people re took arms and I, 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 think, I, I think that was the escalation. I don't know whether there was no cattle wrestling before that. Because yeah, if you Sarah. go through... No, no, no I'm, 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 I'm asking the MP. No, but I can give you information. I'm, I'm coming, wait, before you give uh, information. No, about to answer your question. No, just a minute, because yes. I'm, I'm, I'm just building it. Okay. I want to go back to the Gazette of 1963, just after independence. The Uganda Gazette published the unfortunate remark from the late Dr. Milton Obote of we can't wait for Karamoja to develop. Mm. Uh, and this is, you know, an area that is, has long prolonged droughts, that has a social cultural context that was different, although not different from other people because we had nomads in Angkor and other parts. So nomadic pastoralists was not just unique to Karamoja at that time. So, but, and then we have the regional perspective of the Nyang Tom in, in uh, Ethiopia, the Topotha in South Sudan, the Turkana and Pokot in Kenya, and then the Kalmajong, who, have, who are mixed also with pastoralists and agriculturalists. So we have this context. And then the other dilemma is the land, the land tenure system, where you have fertile lands gazetted as forests, forest mm -hmm. reserves, as national parks, and then the arid and semi-arid lands left for settlement. 54% of <laughs> which comprises of fertile lands is gazetted for non-human activity, human settlement. And then the people are left in the dry lands. So when the disarmament took place, which was successful, unfortunately, what was gazetted as Karamoja cluster, where the other four, all the four countries, were supposed to jointly disarm and resettle the people. The other countries did not do much. Kenya did not. Ethiopia has its own now internal dynamics. They also did not disarm at that time. Yet there were, there were regional efforts through IGAD and the International Conference on Great Lakes to ensure there is joint disarmament plus UNDP agencies in the countries. That did not happen. But the question that I would like to know is after successful disarmament, to what extent did we resettle people? To what extent did we put measures in place for sustainable lives of the people and diversification through, from dependence on cattle? Like the MP referred to it as a bank. What are the other economic activities that happen in the region? How far have we bankrolled the education to change the lives and mindset of the people? Up to today, some elements in Karamoja still pick children from school to bring them to the garden to chase away birds, act as scarecrows. We have an influx of children from Karamoja on Kampara streets. So what happened after disarmament is the, is the information I would like to get, uh, Afande Kuraiji. Um, and uh, I want to first bring in Mapenduzi before we come to that, because that is one of the fundamental questions and discussion points that we are going to have in this, uh, in this, uh, on this forum today. Um, it is unfortunate that the Honorable Minister has not come, because that is where I wanted him to come in. The issue of wh when this armament was successfully done, what did government do? I didn't want it to really be laid at the, <laughs> at the feet of, of, of a general, even if he's part of government. Trust the side as a throw it at me. <laughs> You you know, know, the but government but also, you know that chair, <laughs> we didn't tell you, that chair is uh, uh, the troubled chair. When oh, they put you there, uh, that specific one, yeah. it you is the one that is supposed to shoulder the greatest burden. Now you can be sure, our reward of every attack. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable Mapenduzi, um, come in uh, at this point when we are now beginning to touch on, you know, economic activities, economic agenda, social as well, to really 
change mindsets and uh, of an ordinary, you know, the Karamojong cattle rustler, or a cattle rustler, because we don't know whether they are all Karamojong. Some of them could be Turkana, some of them could be others. How do we do it? You what, know, do you, Charles, what, um, what is your thought about what has been done, what is going on? It's, it's, um, it's quite a painful uh, thing to be um, seeing the same thing and talking about the same thing mm -hmm. for decades. Um, for some of us who grew up in northern Uganda, and especially actually sub-region, we can tell you stories of, you know, what we went through. In the late 80s, our region got raided by cattle rustlers. And for many of us who were young, we grew up knowing that these cattle rustlers were from Karamoja. We used to call them Karamo, uh, Karamojong uh, cattle rustlers. That is what we were made to understand. I was a young boy. I still remember how we were chased, how we, um, in the struggle to save ourselves, how we had to abandon our animals and how they were taken. Um, my father lost a lot, his father my grandfather lost almost 200 and many people in actually sub region but apart from losing animals we lost many lives unfortunately that time i think the world decided to keep quiet about it and to this day, many of us think that it was deliberate. <coughs> deliberate to weaken our people economically. So you can easily treat them the way you want. And that kind of feeling has remained alive. To this day, many of us think that our animals were taken deliberately to weaken our people economically. And that partly explains why, to this day, if you see reports from UBOS and other bodies telling you how a Choli sub-region is languishing in poverty in other parts, many of us think it attracts back to what happened. Um, so many people, you know, these cattle rustlers are extremely inhuman. Because apart from raiding our animals, the kind of things they did to our mothers, the kind of things they did to men, our people have not recovered from that psychologically. But then gradually we started understanding. And today I can tell you, for some of us who have had the opportunity to understand a lot from all parts of the country, what is happening in Karamoja sub-region is extremely unbearable. Then you know it's not just Karamojong cattle rustlers. When you begin to say the Karamojong are the one doing it, then you miss the point. It's a lot more complicated. Actually, I think right now, the level of suffering in Karamoja is, is something that is a lot more painful to talk about. Because we, we, you, you see how people are killed daily. You are sleeping in your house. The next morning, people a morning because from nowhere in the night yeah. the place is raided the entire village is set on fire 
women and children are killed, animals are taken. And so this is a problem that has stayed around for decades and needs to be tackled firmly. Just as uh, Honorable Faith put it, I think the UPDF have tried their best. They did a commendable job. Uh, a few years ago when the disarmament process started, and I think Karamoja sub-region experienced uh, some relative peace. But you see, Charles, this, this is a matter that we need to look at it broadly because we then miss the point when we want to narrow to uh, Karamoja or Uganda issue. When you look at the whole thing ar around cattle rustling, first you look at the history. Unfortunately, how this whole thing started when you try to look at the history, you then get to understand that in the early days, some cultures looked at cattle wrestling as, as, a, sport, normal way of as, life. as a normal way of life. Yes. Mm. Actually, in the early days, it showed you were uh, stronger. Exactly. To test young people how brave they are. <laughs> Actually, the more aid you carried out, exactly. the better. The more you became a hero in the, in, right. in the community. But in were the they early days, armed then? They were not armed. Yeah. But they would use bows and arrows. They were not armed. They were, they yeah. were armed. They were armed with the bows and arrows. Yes, they were armed. Not with the AK. Yes, yes. Yes. Not with yes. the AK. For they, they how were, else we, would you raid they if were you come by handed? Exactly. Uh, Thank uh, you. Thank you for that. You know, sometimes sometimes we want to narrow the definition of armed. Sorry for that. The culture bows. But when you look at the history, then you begin to know how the culture just started growing uh, in Uganda, uh, especially among the Karamoja, uh, the, 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 the Karamojong community. Then you go to South Sudan uh, in the areas of the Karen Warab and uh, the Lake State, and you go to other parts. Then you go to Kenya, you go to Ethiopia, even in Central African Republic and, and Congo, uh, the, the, the areas bordering Central African Republic and Congo going towards a chat and other areas. In most of the areas where they are pastoralists, this is a culture that was acceptable. Unfortunately, because of how things have changed today, many factors have come in. And, and when you try to look at the history of um, um, how these pastoralists, the cattle rustlers rather, started using guns and all that, then uh, especially for East Africa, started in the 80s when uh, some of these wrestlers started getting access to guns, especially from Ethiopia and other parts, and it has grown. Today, it has turned into something different. Actually, um, I'm told, recently I was in Kenya, a friend was telling me how it has become uh, an entrepreneurial crime they are actually cattle warlords now in East Africa. People who take this as a business. When you ask yourself, where, where, when, when these cattle are raided, where do they go? Unlike in the early days when it was a cultural pra practice and people enjoy it, today it has changed. When the raiding takes place, there are people, there are places they, they, they go to, they rush to those places. The animals are loaded. On trucks. On trucks. And they but where do the trucks pass? Exactly. So, so this, this is a matter. The, on the road. Yes. There is no police. When, 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 <laughs> when they, and, and you see, this is something that needs to be well understood, but also well understood. Because these cattle wrestlers are not doing it on their own. Yeah. They are cattle warlords in East Africa. And the collaborators. They are collaborators. And, and, and these wrestlers who are killing people in Karamoja innocently, uh, some of them being killed, are now beginning to understand that, look, this is a very lucrative business, which is illegal. So if we want to deal with this, yes, we need to manage, contain the situation so there is peace, but we also need to get to the root cause. We need to track the road and cut from the road. There are cattle warlords who are turning this into. And then when the animals are raided and taken to urban areas, they are slaughtered. 
some of uh, the beef we enjoy, we enjoy in Kampala. and yeah, in, even mm. in Kampala, by mm. the way, True. in Nairobi, in most of the urban places, mm. and then some of this beef is exported. I had a chat with a friend in Nairobi recently, and because it's 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 also one of their political issues they are talking about. The guy is campaigning in Kenya. When they go to those areas and they are promising how to make sure there is peace and all that, so it's a bigger problem. And so sometimes we miss the point when we think it's just one area in Uganda. It's broader. And then when we look at where the guns are coming from, uh, uh, General uh, Felix and, 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 and the UPDF, they, they did a good job to do the disarmament. But you see, recently we were discussing here, as long as we don't have peace, or lo as long as our neighbors still have issues of security, because you can disarm, the, the cattle rustlers in Karamoja, but as long as South Sudan remains a problem, as long as Kenya remains a problem, as long as Ethiopia, yeah. so there are these access areas that guns can still be. Mm. So then we need to look at how we are going to approach this from a regional point of view in three perspectives. One, how do we look at the security angle? at a regional level. Number two, we need to champion a regional legislative agenda. H how do we look at it at a regional level? And then the third part is the economic aspect. In most of these areas, these are areas that are marginalized. And underdeveloped. And underdeveloped. So we want to solve this problem, but look at Karamoja. Look at Karamoja. But also look at the other areas where there are these pastoralists, I mean pastoralists and, and, and cattle rustling. Okay. It, the, the stories are not different. So we need to look at this from a much broader point of view. How do we make sure we pay special attention to dealing with the aspect of marginalization and poverty in those areas, but also how do we very firmly... Um, recently I was seeing uh, some people were talking about uh, some people were saying the UPDF is abusing uh, the, uh, the rights of the, the rustlers. And then, uh, so, but, but for me, it's much bigger than that. The UPDF are being killed. The pastoralists are being killed. I mean, the, 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 the rustlers are being killed. And the Innocent people. people, the most painful part. Because I will not start to talk about rustlers before I talk about the innocent lives in Karamoja. Mm. Why, why should a woman <laughs> and her children be attacked in the night, killed in cold blood? I think that is unacceptable. So for me, uh, General, I think just from what Honorable Faith put, you did a commendable job. And I'm sure uh, how you did it is still fresh in your mind. How do we get back to that? But you see, it's not only in Karamoja. Mm -hmm. As I speak right now, people are being killed in Agago district. Yes. That is now in Acholi sub-region. Even in Teso. People are being killed in, uh, recently, about three people were killed. Several animals were raided in Agago. And a woman member of parliament, Honorable Beatrice Akore, brought the matter on the floor of parliament. Almost every week, this honorable member oh, of parliament, hmm. almost every week, honorable, honorable faith, every week is bringing this matter. Honorable Mapenduzi, the first bullet my battalion shot in wall was chasing Katura Wall Wall is in Agago. Wall, wall is in Agago. Actually, that time it was in Pade. That time it was Pade. Yes, yes. Now it's Agago. That's right. And where were they? Actually, we intercepted them. They came from Kitugu Machidi. So it's not a local Karamoja problem alone. It's affecting the region. But I wanted to give uh, Sarah asked a question. Because people tend to think that this cultural thing problem is of yesterday. 1912. 1912. My father was one year old. I don't know how, how old yours was. The colonial government. My grandfather was 40. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's your that's yes. grandfather. My father was one year old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
1912. I think my grandfather was born three years later. Uh -huh. The <laughs> colonial government, <laughs> the colonial government <laughs> had to divide. Actually, Uganda lost that territory of Western Kenya because of cattle rustlers. The combination of the Turkana, the Samburu, and the Pokot the other side, with the Karamajong this end, made life hell for the colonial government. Now, in 1912, a new governor was appointed in Nairobi, and he had been fighting insurgents in Malaysia. So the colonial government thought this man with experience of dealing with insurgents will manage these catalysts. So let's split them. So Trukana was sent to the other side, and therefore the whole chunk up southwards to Namanga. And then these ones remain this side. Purely, so we lost the whole territory as a country because of catalysts. It's not a minor problem. That's right. That's 1912. Two. Yes, the cultural was culture. And it was spears, arrows. First guns enter, 1971. The Amini coup. Some soldiers who were fleeing abandoned the guns. The Karamajongs picked. Fast forward, 1979. Soldiers fled the barracks. Mm -hmm. Actually, what happened that uh, her, her, her people entered the barracks, took what they could, mm. and what they couldn't, they invited their colleagues from the other side of the border to come and also take. And that exacerbated the problem. Three, look at the Grand Corridor from Somalia, South Ethiopia, Northern Kenya, South Sudan, and then Horn of Uganda. That was a Grand Corridor. I think it is still a gun corridor. What had helped with the peace returning to Ethiopia, with the arms of operations in Somalia, there was a decline of foreign guns coming from the other side. And that had contributed also to the success we enjoyed uh, in 2009, 2010. So it brings me to what she talked about mindset change. Yes. The entire country needs mindset change about Karamoja. In fact, what uh, Obote said, he did not stop at that. When he arrested the ministers in a cabinet meeting, he, he took, took them, them to Namaru. To Karamoja. The four? Were they two or four? five? They were five. They were five. Yes. Took them to Karamoja. He yeah. took them to Namaru. In a, in a, prison. During in they were arrested. Do you remember uh, the Ibingiras? And, and the, and the reasoning the was, yes. the reasoning was mm. north of Namaru is a hostile tribe. So if they escape the north, they will be killed. South of Namaru is a game reserve, the Pianupe. If they escape south, they will be eaten by animals. Food. That was the reason. And indeed, what these guys stayed in Namaru until 1971 coup. So you can see the, no, the thinking so of the your, It is in your own interest to be in prison. <laughs> 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 so you can see the mindset of the post-independence <laughs> government towards Karamoja. Hmm. That's the first problem. Two, even when there was an attempt to disarm in Karamoja in the early 80s, 81, 82, it was so brutal. Scotch that method. First, they told them the helicopters will be able to locate the guns if you don't bring them out. Of course, the helicopters didn't have the technology at that time of pinpointing guns. So, the military used the brutal methods. Did the guns come out? No. Now, what I don't want to agree with is the notion that no efforts have been made to address the socioeconomic issues in Karamoja. The first program I remember with this government, of KDA, of any social program was Luero and Karamoja. In fact, the difference was the that Karamoja we, Development Agency? Yes. KDA. KDA. Was that the one under uh, the Honorable Butele? Yes. Anthony Butele. Anthony Butele? Yes. And then is, is that the, the one they used to used call to Karamoja Developer Karamoja. Rua. Yes. No, they used to call it Karamoja, Karamoja Developer Rua. Developer Rua. Ah. That's how I knew it from when I was young. Yes, Karamoja Developer Rua. Because Why? the notion, the thinking, or the suspicion was that... Uh, because Butele was from that, Arua. Uh, because Butele was uh, a man from Arua, Elugwara. But is Madi right? Develop Kampala. He, he <laughs> <laughs> Now that one is yours. I know. I'm here again for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the 
Karamoja Integrated Development Project. Karamoja Development Agency. In, I was so, in primary school then, and we used to do uh, drama, and we called it Karamoja Thunders, but a rare develops. <laughs> yes, sir. So, efforts were made as to whether they indeed the, man, the, the money which was invested in KDA went for what it was meant for, that's a different matter. <laughs> Yeah, Sarah, you may laugh. You see, I, I want to be careful. We, are, we need also okay. to discuss that because I, 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 I one, of be the things, one of the accusations now that is being brought out in the last two, three years for as one of the reasons for the failure of the current situation is that some of our security people are now benefiting mm. from Before you come to that, I, I was trying to give, to mm. give you the government please, intervention. Please, yeah. Uh, because she challenged it to me, and uh, yes. I, for me, I, I indeed bothered to inform myself. Mm. There were also efforts by government to sponsor 10 students per district in Karamoja. True or false, Honorable? In fact, the current state now, they have been increased from 10 to 18, 18 per, district. per district. Yes. For the nine districts? For the nine districts. So, among actually the challenges now in Karamoja, you multiply 10 by 9 every three years. That's Those nine, are graduates ten. that have not got jobs ready for them. That's another challenge. Now the numbers have been grown to 18 per district. Not really 18. Some have 15, some have 10. But the, the policy, mm. the policy, they put the number at 18. If you reach 18, we are good for the district. Mm. So government has done efforts to help change Karamoja. And then at the when uh, the first lady was minister for Karamoja, even the settlements, were, uh, there was an attempt to change the settlement patterns. Uh, what is this place where they have those uh, houses? In Manyata? In uh -uh. Nadunget. We Nadunget. Have, uh, the modern villages. The modern villages. Mm. There was also an attempt to change the settlement patterns. It didn't really change, but we're just building now with stronger material. Semi-permanent. Uh, that's yeah. what I'm saying, Sem an attempt. Semi-permanent. Mm. Yes. Mm. From grass such to semi-permanent. Sem yeah. No, but the Nadugat project is not semi-permanent. Is it? It is semi-permanent. It is. Because those are not burnt bricks. Mm. Okay. It is semi-permanent. Semi <laughs> no, the technology is different. It's, you don't have to burn every brick. There's <laughs> new technology where you don't burn the bricks. <laughs> Um, it's permanent. I it's permanent. The hydroform technology. Hydroform oh, hydroform. the hydroform. Yes. Okay. So it's permanent. Yes. You yes. don't have to burn every brick. <laughs> 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 but the houses are giving way right now if we uh, go to check. So anyway, That's anyway. Okay. the they point are I was making. They are, they are cracking. They are cracking. Hmm. No, no, no. But you see, um, with hydroform technology, <laughs> they are uh, it's, it's permanent. Mm. It's permanent, but uh, there, there are few technicalities involved. For example, if you do hydro, well, I'm not an engineer, but I'll tell you from my <laughs> practical experience. You do hydroform uh, technology, there are a few protective measures you have to put. So, mm. so, the, the, so the blocks are not exposed to, you know, either uh, rain and, so it's about what the people could have done in mm. doing so, but it's mm. permanent. Okay, that's a different matter. Mm. Yes, honorable. So now to answer your question mm. uh, about uh, the accusations leveled against the UPDF, the, UPDF. The, the security people. But also, yeah. but before, Is it the, true? before that, when that? I about the influx of Karamoja children on Kampara Street, what is the cause? It's nothing to do with security. Ah, ah, ah. No? I, will, I will not accept that one. Mm. It okay, has okay, to do okay. With, uh, let, me, let me mention. Okay, uh, okay the, fine. The, the I, I need us to go for a break. <laughs> my, my, my production team has requested that we go for a break. This is now a major point. The influx of children. Yes. And uh, whether or not and the security news. people yes. are benefiting from the insecurity. Yes. Let's go for a break. We will come to start on that. <laughs>
the best entertainment for any budget. With GoTV, you will have great entertainment for as little as 13,000 Ugandan shillings per month. GoTV, great stories. Zidiwano, GoTV Uganda. Love it. Pay for your dream phone, Mpola Mpola. Get your dream phone today for as low as 1,400 Uganda shillings with free data for a year and pay slowly, slowly. All phones come with daily 50 MBs for 12 months. Repayment period is one year. Available at MTN service centers and M Copper shops. COVID-19 is still here with us. As Professor Magichigozi states, the time is now for all of us to get vaccinated. When we have one person who's not vaccinated, it affects everybody around them, most especially the ones close to you. Keep your family safe. Anyone right now who's over 18 should go and get vaccinated. Because of the new COVID-19 circulating variants like Omicron, it is very important for all of us to be fully vaccinated with two doses of the same vaccine type. It's only those getting Johnson & Johnson who receive only a single dose to be fully protected. Even after vaccination, continue to adhere to all SOPs by wearing a mask properly, covering your mouth and nose, washing your hands regularly with soap and clean water, or using an alcohol-based sanitizer, maintaining physical distance of at least two meters from others, and avoiding crowds. Eta COVID-19, chijakugwa. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from UNICEF and partners. World Cup in the desert, the first one in the Middle East, the first to be held at the end of the year, that's crazy. Get ready for spectacular moves. High flying saves. Unbelievable goals. Out of this world celebration. All 64 matches live. That's over 5,000 action-packed minutes of the FIFA 2022 World Cup Qatar. Now that's crazy. Catch all the action only on Supersport, your world of champions. On Go TV, love it. Even with my grandson, a doctor at my side, I struggled to get the help I needed. But he saw something that day. He began to work day and night he wouldn't quit, even when people said no. He wouldn't stop fighting. He knew... It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field could not be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Ah. My radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development, and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communication sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. Need to send money to a loved one but you don't have enough on your phone? Have you run out of fuel but you don't have enough money? Do you want to pay for yaka or water but have insufficient funds? Or do you want to shop but you don't have enough money? Don't worry, get away with MTN Momo Advance. Momo Advance tops up your Momo to complete your transactions. Dial star 165 star 5 star 3 hash to apply. MTN Momo Advance is always available when you need it. Welcome. Welcome back from the break. This is Behind the Headlines. 
this Wednesday, the 13th of April 2022. Today's topic, we are looking at the security situation in the Karamoja region. And discussing that, we have the defense spokesperson, Brigadier General uh, Felix Kulaije. We have Honorable Faith Nakut, who is MP for Napak District. We have the Honorable Ojara Mapenduzi, who is MP for Laibi Bardege in Gulu City. And we have Dr. Sara Birete, who is the Executive Director of the Center for Constitutional Governance. Um, General, I need us to start on the point, uh, interesting point at which we went for the break. Are the security people, some of them to say, benefiting from the insecurity in Karamoja? I'll answer that question as I'm asking another one to my neighbor. It is good you're asking her. Of course. You can't it's ask not me. For you. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is our thing. Yes. <laughs> it's our, our problem. Uh, these allegations have been made yes. against uh, the EPDF that some of us uh, collaborate in uh, marketing the cows, if I may use that word. As far as I'm concerned, we do not work alone. We work with committees, especially when it comes to return of recovered animals because the committees ex are expected to know the owners. Maybe the panel and the viewers could benefit from honorable. What's the role of the local leaders in this matter? On this criminality? Yes, because the criminals are known by the local people. What's the role of the leaders? The leaders do their job of being a link between the people and government the state actors that are supposed to protect the people. By the way, when, when a raid happens any time, they call me or any elected leader in Karamoja. We don't sleep. So when they call you, they are saying government has a duty to protect us. Who calls you? The, peop the, peop the, the victims. Mm -hmm. The victims do call. Mm -hmm. All the elected leaders in Karamoja are called every night, every day. They have raided here again. What do you do? And so what we do is to inform the actors that are supposed to protect the people. We inform the, 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 the brigade commander, the division commander, the, the commanders of all the detaches in Karamoja. We inform them. Police, this village has been raided. This corral has been raided. And do they respond immediately? Police respond. Now that is where the problem is. The response has been extremely sluggish in many occasions. Recently? Yes, especially when, the, when a raid happens in the night. We have had reports where people, where people say, oh, we reported, but we were informed that it wait up to morning because the priority should be to protect the, the, the officer. The officer cannot move at night. Mm. Yes, yes, we've had those, those reports coming out. And so when you wait up to morning to respond, the cows cannot be recovered. And you rightly said that the current, uh, the current criminality of raiding is highly commercialized mm. because people want to, to, to raid and, and sell to make money quickly. So if you are to wait up to morning, remember the buyer is already waiting. He is aware that a raid is going to happen. Recovery becomes impossible. But, uh, but of course, I don't agree with your earlier uh, assertion that uh, during the peaceful time, Karamoja lost more cows than they have. That is a, a, a true lie. The, the records of, uh, of you both indicate that during the peaceful time, the livestock in Karamoja increased rapidly. People grew their wealth. <laughs> That, that, that one is on record. Uh, so in terms of, when we talk about uh, livelihoods options, development, what, even if government doesn't... Just I want to ask a fan on this very question. Now that there is insecurity in Karamoja, why is it hard for UPDF and or government to put quarantine on cattle sale in Karamoja so that you first handle the crisis? 
Why can't you stop movement of cattle? <laughs> Can I tell you why it is not possible to put a quarantine on movement of cattle? Okay, on sale. We had attempted that during the, the COVID season. Fortunately, it was COVID season. The whole country was locked up. But the cows still kept moving. Do you know why? Because there is a cartel. Criminals in Uganda know how to do their thing. They identify one in the military, one in every, every bridge. So that even if there are roadblocks of the ass to, the cows will still they go. They are collaborators. Yes, the cows will still go, even if there are roadblocks. So in terms of having a, a quarantine, but also, you rightly, Sarah, you said that uh, the, the colonialists uh, made a mistake and, and puzzled uh, half of Karamoja, the most fertile part, yes. to, be, to be for what? government. Forest reserves. Yes. And yes. Then the other part for human settlement. Now, Sarah, mm. if you say completely don't sell any animal, will anybody in Karamoja afford even medical care? Will because they afford education? Their livelihood. Their yeah. livelihoods. It's is their in that livelihood. cow. Cattle. It it's is in that cow. By virtue of the climate, mm. their livelihood lies there. So the decision to say zero sell means you are telling 1.3 million people to die. It's not, impo it's okay. not possible. It's, it's not, not possible. possible unless, yeah, and you know, they, practically we know that we can't even feed them, even if we say we put their relief. We, are, we don't have that capacity to I, feed I them. Have, um, I have a contrary view. Uh, to what? Uh, in terms of livelihood <laughs> and uh, not, not... But the, there is an option. Yeah, that's, that's the angle I wanted to bring. Mm. Um, I think we need to get to the hard talk, the hard question. Uh, one time I was uh, listening to um, the president speak. He was telling uh, stories about how he helped to uh, transform, to change uh, the minds of pastoralists especially in Western Uganda, in the Ankole area. How he took time as a student, talking to people and moving to different places, and how many people started seeing that and changing from moving from one place. Of course, he said but they were changing not from nomadism. Let, let me first finish. The, the climate uh, Dr. is Sarah, different. Okay. Let me first finish. <laughs> yeah. How? So were you a nomad yourself? Why are you no, stopping no, no. going? <laughs> I, I, I was also going to tell you yeah. because when drought hits that place, mm. it is menacing. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, what I am trying to drive at is that I think now we need to get to that discussion. That yes, there is this rustling that is going on, but apart from the rustling, poverty is real in Karamoja. And so, apart from talking about cattle keeping, because not everybody in Karamoja has animals. Not everybody. All right? There are people who have got. And also, um, if we are looking at the viability, if we want to support uh, Karamoja uh, to do a lot more in cattle keeping, then there must be a deliberate focus from government to support that as a sector. But also, let me tell you this. I during no sub. But, but uh, let, let me first finish. Charles, mm. it appears we are diverting this mm. discussion to livelihood, and yet that is just security. one aspect. Mm. The real thing here is insecurity, which we want now to divert. The criminals are taking advantage of the situation. But but he's giving he's looking for solutions that end criminality. That, that's, that's what I'm talking yes. about, because for me, I'm looking at the bigger picture. It, is a, it appears we are justifying the criminality and saying, okay, because of the livelihood challenges, they have a right to steal. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I <laughs> am saying that as long as we give security to Karamoja, even if you don't bring any other money, people in Karamoja will become rich. That is it. Basic basic only security even if you don't bring alternative values you want to remove all the cows and tell everybody to go and cultivate and yet you're not bringing irrigation but, but let me first ask honorable yeah. faith yes please is it only security that will solve everything no. what is no. driving insecurity what no, is no, no. driving insecurity isn't it the want 
or the need for survival, which is livelihood, is indeed, even from the start, is indeed you and us here who agreed that cattle forms the livelihood of a karamojong and, and that bad. therefore it's, it's the threat to it or removing it will drive them crazy and they would rather die. Isn't it what we agreed on? And therefore, and that's what I think, and that therefore his perspective is that you need to have a number of solutions to the problem. And from what I get in his, in, in his beginning of argument, is that he is disagreeing with the fact that only cows make a karamojong, isn't it? That's the point. That's what I was driving so, at. Well, let I, me, I, let I, me I, give I his argument. Faith. I, I, I agree Honorable. that, that, that this conversation of livelihoods is very good. It is important. But it's not for now. Because we are burning to the point that we can't even think of, of livelihood. It is life first. Honorable. I asked you a question, and yes. you said what MPs do. My question was, what's the role of local leaders in the current scenario? MPs are not local leaders. <laughs> they are not. not. <laughs> you are not it local leaders. It depends on which local leaders you are referring to, because what I know is the LC3 chairman. LC5, the LC3 chairman. Local, uh, LC3, LC1, our, our LC3 opinion chairman. leaders, the peace, the peace to be honest, leaders. The, L3, the LC5 chairman in Karamoja, from the time they got sewn in, they have not sat in office to plan any development, do anything, because they are running after cattle thieves you, you know, every Ch day. Charles, let me, okay. let me say this. Okay. As a fact, the LC3 chairman are, are, are running in the same way. The point I also got from that question, it almost sounded like a leading question, because it, especially the, the placement, it came off a challenge of uh, the security, are uh, some security people benefiting from the insecurity? So in attempting to respond to that or, re or answer that question is when General brought that question. And my understanding or my suspicion was that General was in other words saying even the local leaders are, are benefiting, benefiting from the insecurity. Is that so? <laughs> in my view, it's not so. The reason is... Can you speak for all the local leaders <laughs> and their hearts? Why do you think I asked you that question? <laughs> well, can, can yes, I, just say I can this? speak for the local leaders because... <laughs> First of all, it, the, these are elected people. By the time you begin cheating your own people, which kind of leader are you? Oh, honorable. I'm we, sorry. We have That's MPs. naive. <laughs> That's naive. <laughs> <laughs> honorable. They the are, people who are looting this government, the people who are looting this country. Of MPs taking the price of fast <laughs> rolls <laughs> and the brand budgets. But, but uh, Charles, it's not, Charles, it's not the voters who loot. You see, Charles, I think that is let, somebody that's to us every day, let, let yes, running to the military um, for rescue. Faith, well, um, it is possible that they could be there. But if they are there and they are known with all our, mili our intelligence machinery, we know that there is a leader who is collaborating and we cannot arrest him. What kind of negligence is that? Okay. Um, um, well, um, I, you, you, you know I'm, I'm very disciplined. <laughs> yes, you are. And so I, I always don't want to interrupt. <laughs> but, uh, I'm, but I'm also disciplined. But, I want to take some But tea. I also accept to be interrupted. Even me, I'm disciplined except um, when provoked. No, um, you are, yes, you are disciplined. I don't, I don't. Uh, uh, but, but, but what I can say is, uh, you know, Charles, um, General asked a question. And I can tell you, recently I met a member of parliament. I looked for this guy for almost a month and a half. So when I got him, I was like, you man, what has happened to you? You don't appear in parliament. You and I said, you know, my people are dying. Mm. This is Honorable Chero of Abin. Mm. Yeah, that's Chero true. said, I cannot sit in that parliament when my people are dying in Abin. Mm. They are being killed. They are being attacked. They are losing everything. Mm. OK? I know this honorable member and honorable Remigio and all the MPs from Karamoja do not have peace sitting in that house. Mm. So we understand that. And we cannot underestimate the kind of efforts they are making. But I also want us to, um, there, are, there are things that should be done now. I don't, I don't have any doubt in that. Um, but 
again taking us to what was done before. The UPDF will intervene, the situation will come down, but if we don't look at the bigger picture, it will come up again. And so every time we will be doing the firefighting approach, mm -hmm. the fire brigade approach. And I think this issue of Karamoja sub-region needs to be taken a lot more seriously. I don't deny that there are a lot of interventions that have been made. But we should ask ourselves as a country, where have we gone wrong? Mm -hmm. Why is it that every time there is, there are different programs coming, different, actually even right now, there are more NGOs. There are more NGOs in Karamoja. Just about before COVID, I went to Moroto, a big meeting where Dino, uh, there is a Dino program, and all of us went to Karamoja and we were having a meeting. But then you wonder, why is it that poverty and the people and, and the children, things are not okay? Where have we gone wrong? Yeah, there is an avalanche of any Jews. And, and we, are not going to, we are not going to blame the Karamojong people. You see, we, we are not going to blame. Are not a but doctor, okay. no, doctor sure. let me finish. But at times you must carry yourself as if you as are actually an alternative to government. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. So, so, so what it's I was saying, Charles. Which is not true. No, so, true. so what it's I was saying. Hey, but they no. must carry themselves. By, by, by the way, General. No. Why, why is it that the when of is no. General and Sarah and <laughs> Faith? Why is it that when I'm talking, you people won't interrupt? My and when you talk, I don't interrupt. <laughs> what is your problem? My apologies, Honorable. Honorable, my What is the problem? My apologies. Okay, yeah. So, so let, let, let me finish. So, for me, we, we cannot blame the people. Well, Charles, <laughs> sorry, sorry for that. I'm, I'm very sorry for being It's wrong. okay, yes. it's okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but, 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 you see, we cannot blame the people of Karamoja for being poor. We cannot blame the women and children from Karamoja for, for this terrible kind of life in Kampala, what they are going through. But I think we need to take responsibility as a country. And government needs to acknowledge that whatever efforts we have made as a country have not solved the problem. True. And we need to get back, back to the drawing board. <coughs> and let me give you an example. About two years ago, mm. under the Northern Uganda Social Action Fund 3, mm. and I want to thank Dr. Lim Lim. For the first time I went to Karamoja, and people were investing. Irish potatoes. I don't know whether you saw that. Irish. A place where nobody thought. The dry savanna exactly. land. All right. And, and I saw people harvesting their own maize grain and some of them giving free to their neighbors. Using irrigation. So there are things that can be done for this region. We, we, we are not going to say leave cattle keeping because they believe in that. They should be supported in that direction. But they should also be made to understand that there are alternatives. This region can do much better. So that's really what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sarah. Yeah, if, if I may come in, there, there, was a, there is a question on the table yes. on the exodus of Karamoja children oh, on the streets. Yes, on but before you get on that honorable, there have been attempts, like people were mentioning, Karamoja agencies. Mm. It is a, KDA, Kidipo, you know, you can name it, they keep changing mm. names. But oh, what is on the ground? I know there was a, a project including varied dams to create water because people move in search of water and pasture. But you know what happened to the valley dams? Okay, but I'm coming. So as we <laughs> say, there are agencies. Can we move away from mentioning agencies? What happened to the dams? Tangible results. Oh, the they they in, can't in, be in, seen in, in with the naked eyes. Kampala, there are villages which are called valley dams. You know it. Yeah. Like in Kampala, there are villages named Karamoja Valley Dams. Because sure? the money remained where? Are you in sure? Kampala. <laughs> On our face. I am sure I will take you. Please. To, to the villages. <laughs> yeah. anyway, please take me with you. Take oh. him with me. With you, Charles. <laughs> well, the thing is, there have been attempts to help Karamoja economically. And I think the goodwill of the NRM government has been there from the time the NRM government came with the 10 point program, with the KD, here, with all, all those. And the results. Un unfortunately, the results are not clearly visible. Why I would, not? I would think maybe perhaps because these are projects that are designed and coined elsewhere, which are not agreeing with the kind of life and the environment 
so that when the project is the pump, the money is pumped, it goes to waste, doesn't change anything. So the approach must change. Instead of forcing everybody to get the ore to go to cultivate, do I, I ask them what you want them to do, what they want. The people are wise, by the way, even if they haven't gone to school. They know what works. Instead of going, instead of going to, to create water where there is no water and you think it will come, there is a way that people understand their environment. They know what works for them. So the failure of many of those programs is I because of that, the design. I hope, I hope you're giving that just as an example. Because if you have cattle as uh, your major livelihood, mm. and then they provide you water, ah, is well, that a major solution? But is the water solution? there? We okay, need the water okay, beyond a, the paper. That's another, okay, that's another question. <laughs> we Important need, at that. No, we, we need the water for the cows. Yeah. But the design, what, do you, what kind of water, how do you, how do you bring the water? Are you going to get a water bowser to, br to begin ferrying water to Karamoja? There is a way to design the water, uh, the, the water intervention so that you invest the existing water that, that comes there. It's so that you don't keep ferrying water from another place. Those are interventions that usually fail. Or you just assume by, by passing or signing an agreement or signing a project, you assume that it has happened when it has not happened. Okay. Um, ladies there and gentlemen, there is a gentlemen, question I have ladies and gentlemen, Karamoja children. The, the issue Karamoja of children, children, which must be said, mm. it is true. What is driving them onto Kampala streets? There are two drivers. Or even in, in Bale, in Jinja. In I would say three. Mm. One of them is economic. This one we're talking about. Poverty. Where people feel like, okay, it is more, you, you can survive elsewhere. Mm. Go and survive. So that even parents can release their children willingly. The other is insecurity. All these children now, if you tell them, let's go back home, they will tell you it's but, not but, but the exodus of Kampala, sorry to intervene, the exodus of Karamoja children mm. happened during the peaceful time yes. of 2012, 2018. What was the problem? <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I, did I tell you that in 2011, they, uh, when the guns left, there were people who came to homes with bottles of like this and they hit the bottle and raid everything. The entire 2011, the people who remained in Karamoja were sleeping in schools every night. That is when the exodus increased. And now when you come to the street and you can have a good life, it's difficult to go back home. There is a direct relationship between the exodus to the street and insecurity. I told you about the, the raid to the Kral in, in Lope in December. I went there, and the, the, one of the elders who lost his 200 cows told me, Faith, what am I going to do to the children? Mm. I am going to send them to the street. And I told him, please don't. Don't send them to the street. Elder is called a peri. Don't send them to the street. I insisted. That was now 2011. In March 2011, on the street of Kampala, I found his daughters. They sang for me my campaign songs on the street. And I remembered what the father had told me. This thing was so fresh. And this was a man who was able to take care of his children with his cows. Those girls are now in the street with their babies. That's not enough. I lived in Kotido from 2005 up to 2010. During the period of um, disarmament, I lived in Kotido. The people in Kotido never left Kotido. Kotido, their livelihood was within Kotido. But they are now in a gargoyle looking for what to do. They are slaves in the neighboring districts. They are in the, recently we had to repatriate some from the city of Gulu. They had gone to beg children that filled up a lorry. This, there is a direct relationship which really hurts. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Faith. Um, I need to bring in the, um, the audience to join the discussion through the comments and uh, some of them questions. Um, I, unfortunately, I cannot sample. I cannot pick all of them. There are so many. Uh, so my producer has only picked a few. 
Um, one from Noamanya Emmanuel from Barara. He says, before we discuss the insecurity in Karamoja, can we first get a clear explanation of what is causing insecurity in that area? Because as you know, you cannot deal with the problem before you get to know the cause. Um, that's what we are discussing, Noamanya. Um, Geoffrey Akena from Gulu says, disarmament of Karamojong is good project, but how do you disarm and fail to protect Karamojong from cattle rustlers from other tribes or other of other countries like Kenya and South Sudan? How safe are the borders? That's an important question, Geoffrey. Thanks a lot. Um, <coughs> Justin Ojangole says, the Teso Arab boys are requesting for guns to protect affected areas in Teso. What, why is the UPDF refusing to give Arab boys guns, yet they are failing to control the cattle raiders? Honorable Kulaije, you will need to respond to that. Um, Habat Okelo is saying, my question to Afande Kulaije is how come the soldiers providing the protection cannot even know where the cows raided end up? Because in my traditional understanding, when thieves steal a cow from our area, we would trace through their footmarks. <laughs> this is an interesting one, because he has reminded me of some thieves in <laughs> Nebi then. When they were going to steal cows, they would have shoes, they would put shoes of human beings on their on their on the hooves cows, yes. <laughs> and facing in the opposite direction. Exactly. So, so you follow a different direction. You, you follow where they, <laughs> they came from instead of where they went. Um, Mawadri Justin from Germany says, I think the issue of Karamojo, Karamoja should be treated as a national crisis. However, I want to raise a concern to the Afande how best can you assure the country that you will ensure peace through defense and end fears of the locals in that affected region? That's Mawadri Justin. Uh, Rameka, Rameka Masiko says, cattle wrestling or raiding is no longer a cultural practice as it was many years ago, but now a form of organized crime committed by international criminal networks. So joint task force of East African countries must in get involved, must involve the government. The government should allow Arab boys to come back if we can defend army, can defend Somalia. How about people of Uganda and their properties? That is by Okurut. Uh, Philip Loibok <laughs> from Moroto says, we as Karmajongs know now that the government has totally failed to solve the problem of cattle wrestling, but where do Karmajongs get these guns from? Finally, Opio Jasfa from Lira City says, I would like to inform the House that our government is good, but so relaxed when it comes to issues regarding Northern. That is Opio Jasfa. Um, let me start with general. Um, there are some sentiments here. Like Justin Ojangole says, the Arab boys are requesting for guns. Why are you not giving them to defend themselves? Uh, and then um, Mawadri, that the matter of uh, Karamoja must be treated as a national issue. And uh, and of course, the others. General, what's your view to those? Uh, <coughs> first of all, the matter is a national issue. Resources have been committed to deal with this insecurity. Two, just yesterday, the president made the shuffle in command in third division. It's not out of fashion. It's interest to see that this problem is dealt with. Now, on the question of Arab boys, by the time we decide to deploy a particular force level, we have considered the threat levels as well. 
Two, Arab boys are not in the barracks waiting to be armed. They are villagers. They are people who are doing their own businesses. They would require polishing up. More resources to be committed. But three, you remember over the weekend we had uh, 6,240 LODUs passed out in Kaweta Training School. They are going to be absorbed in the EPDF. Again, to meet them and power gaps. As we speak, another group in Olirim is about to pass out. Another group in Agago. Uh, one of my you know, uh, Labodong. Yes, Labodong. Another group is about to complete training also. So we, we are addressing the issue of manpower. And therefore, Mr. Ojangore, the Arab boys are still our reserve. We, we, you, don't bring, you don't commit your reserve unless really you have exhausted the, those in active service. That's my answer to his question. Yes, um, on honorable, honorable um, faith. Um, there was a question of, uh, um, I think that has been answered. Um, they, but there was from Masiko that cattle wrestling is no longer a cultural practice, um, but a form of organized crime and needs international networks to come together. Um, is at this at this joint operation still operational in your view from the ground um, of East Africa and and general can also help us respond to it because if the if 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 faith from the beginning told us that uh, you know some of the wrestlers come from across the border yeah. and uh, we suspect that Kenya maybe is not doing enough to you know, to, to disarm the Turkana wrestlers from the other side. And then they come and cause mayhem this side, hence uh, leading to a lot of spillover um, in terms of insecurity. How uh, are these working in, in the Karamoja region faith from, uh, as an MP, are you aware of it working? Oh, yes, the criminal gangs exist across. With the, between, you, between Uganda and the neighboring countries, criminal elements. We had hopes in the bilateral agreement that was signed between Uganda and Kenya, and the president signed in 2019, just when insecurity had started spilling in. And we had hopes that that agreement would now make us share resources peacefully and there would be no, no fight between the two countries, but it hasn't really helped. Criminal elements exist, and those alliances do exist internationally. But there are criminal elements. The current uh, raiding, I agree with the Masiko, that the current uh, criminality is not cultural, and that's what Ugandans need to know. It's not cultural. It's not that people are doing it as a culture. If it was a culture, then why did, did we miss our culture for 10 years of peace? Because <laughs> culture should not, should not break. It has to flow even when there is no gun. So it's really not cultural. But there are those criminal elements within Uganda. And they are not necessarily Karamojongs. That's why we feel offended when the headline says Karamoja wrestlers. Even when the culprits are of a different tribe, but they are branded and lumped up together. The criminal elements do exist because it is a commercialized trade. That cartel is there. Fortunately, many of them use mobile phones. And that is why I have been thinking that there is negligence or lack of will to solve this problem. Because when you have, we are in a, a, a season different from 2010. In 2010, they were, we didn't have the technology adequate to track communication. Now we do. And if these people are even using mobile phones, it means even just within a week, you can arrest the cartel of criminals. It is a network. But somehow, we can't do much about it. 
these criminals exist everywhere. At least what I know is that even within our neighborhood of the regions within uh, bordering Karamoja, those criminal elements have been spotted. We have had LC1s of the neighboring districts being arrested when a, 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 phone, a phone of a cattle rustler is picked, when a cattle rustler is killed, and the last communication was with the LC1 of the area being raided. But that information will not be mentioned. Everywhere they will say Kar Karamojong wrestlers, and yet they are collaborators of these criminal elements. Everywhere. Now we are talking honorable. Yes, and that's now the are truth. <laughs> they are talking of criminal elements. Everywhere. So no, the, the honorable, honorable is saying now you are talking because you have said that uh, the, the, the communication leaders. of uh, an LC1 no, who is question. a local leader. Yes. Yeah, like there there is a communication of, uh, we got, for example, recently, we got a, a phone with the, the, a, a, a cattle rustler, an elected cattle rustler was killed in Olilim. And the phone, this phone, they got a communication of an LC1 of Olilim. But my colleagues will come out to say, the Karamajongs have raided us. They won't mention, they will not mention the collaboration between the, the, neighboring, uh, the neighboring region and the criminal. That is the unfairness Karamoja has gone Olim through. Olim is in uh, Olim, actually. Olim is in Teso. No, Olim in is in Teso. Yes, nobody in will Katapu. mention that. They will only mention the other part that blackmails the entire Karamoja. And not knowing that we are in pain. The people of Karamoja are in more pain <laughs> but than the neighbors have. Honorable, hmm. I do appreciate it. The sentiment. So, 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 so Charles, maybe I should mention my, 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 my bitterness, which I also think is the reason why this thing has continued to increase. The miscommunication. And then they By who? <laughs> by, 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 by the UPDF? Because the person <laughs> who communicates is here. <laughs> so if he miscommunicates... <laughs> Is, okay, there is this share of miscommunication. And this share <laughs> of miscommunication is in telling the country and telling, uh, telling His Excellency that the situation is it's under control. It it's is under being control. managed. That is the miscommunication. So when you say the situation is being managed, it's under control. It is not, uh, it's not in the way it is. The required action will not be put. The required as, effort, as the required the resources. Increased. The, the employment will not increase because the situation is under control. You will not take, the required action will not be achieved. When you paint the picture that the, the situation is being managed, that, that the, the neighboring regions in Karamoja are the only ones affected, Karamoja is not. When this can explain to me the number of lives they have lost, and, and I, when I compare them with the number of lives lost in Karamoja, they can't even get a halfway. Honorable, uh, uh, Brigadier General, do you want to respond to that? Yes, um, yes, I, I, But that's, did, not did I, only, did I, no, that's not the only miscommunication. I, you talk. Yes, no, so let me I, I was still question. building the point of miscommunication. It's not only you. Do you want to take the entire <laughs> <laughs> No. There is miscommunication <laughs> coming from the media. Hmm, hmm. Us now. Ah, yes. The, 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 the media will not say that the, 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 this, these lives have been lost. When we lost the geologists, the media said, Karamojong Rasas, without any investigation, even when we knew who had killed the geologists. And but, so it but, makes the rest of Uganda hate everybody who is branded but, but in that way. Charles, no. that, that miscommunication. And then the, the, the media will agree with a certain theory. A certain, can I tell you what happened recently? Let me tell you what happened recently. There was a stage-managed displacement from our neighborhood. Stage-managed. I know that the media facilitated it and then went and said, Karamojongs have displaced this number of people. The next day when investigators were sent, nobody had been displaced. But the name of the entire region is already spoiled. The media is collaborating. Every, everything seems not to work in favor of Karamoja in this conflict. I, and I, that's I, what I, I, bothers But, but for the record, I, I watched uh, a clip of that uh, sad incident. And uh, I watched on UBC. It was well covered, the way it was, the way you were saying it, okay. without anything changing okay. different okay. so I, I yes you, you can 
w the media should take its part of the blame. Yes. Um, but not entire media. Um, okay. And okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so but I find it, I there find is it, miscommunication even from us, the leaders. I agree in terms of uh, one point that you said, which I really want to agree with, is the 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 need for a mindset change in Uganda. In Uganda yeah. about Karamoja. That that I agree with you entirely. You. Um, General Kulaije, you were protesting miscommunication. Um, miscommunication. <laughs> you see. For an ordinary Ugandan, when you hear people have been killed in Karamoja by restaurants, what comes to your mind? That the Karamojong have killed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But why <laughs> must it be that? Wait a minute. Why because it, be it has happened in Karamoja. Before. Because it has happened where? In Karamoja. Will you choose a choice who are not there? Until indeed the true picture is communicated out. But sincerely, honorable, when you are talking, I kept quiet. Honorable, listen to okay. <laughs> listen to your colleague. Okay. When we communicated, I didn't mention the Watulukana. Mm. I didn't say the Wakaramajo. I said the Watulukana. I even went on to say the efforts we are making to get the criminals, whom we have got, by the way, to recover the guns we had lost. We did communicate about that. But that does not also remove the fact that there are some Karamajong criminals That's true. that have attacked neighboring districts. Mm. That's true. That one I don't I don't. Abim dispute. has suffered at the hands of GA thieves. That's mm. true. Mm. Right? That one is true. You have people in among the PN that have been robbed by Bokora thieves. You want us to say to be it is other people when it is Bokora thieves? No, we won't. So for us, we do communicate exactly who's doing it. The difference is the aspect of playing victim all the time is what some of us disagree with. Come out and condemn the thieves from your own area. Yes, that we are doing. Right? Yes, that we are doing. Because for us, we believe that when elected leaders take a position, all right, it reverberates into the society. Mm -hmm. One, two, you remember when I asked about the local leaders? Mm. The disarmament committees are formed of both the cultural leaders and the elected leaders at local level. Some of these things are given intelligence by members of these committees. So, whereas. Not so. Mm. Okay, Sarah, you had raised your point. You had raised your hand. Yes, I, 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 I think because it seems time is, is going. Yeah. I, I think the problem of Karamoja, which has been really part of Uganda and even the days before Uganda, but I, I think we need to look, and especially for the leaders, honorable faith, look at security beyond the silence of guns, beyond the killing and running. Look what you should have a, a, a three prolonged approach, short term, medium, and long term. Absolutely. Yes, but when w that like when you are saying don't discuss livelihood, that, I think the timing is the problem. Yes, but yeah, we understand the, the crisis now. The crisis now. Yes, but but, we, but discussing discussed. the crisis alone does not solve the problem. Mm. Uh, and, and, and and my second comment goes to to a fan in the hot seat. <laughs> uh, I've had MPs. Now fire is coming. Yes, I've, I've had uh, MPs from Karamoja saying that from the time the brigade was withdrawn Somalia, the deployment of UPDF, the, the, the strength of UPDF on the ground is limited. With this increase in insecurity, have you increased the deployment and to what extent? Okay. Um, we have increased the de deployment and to a very big extent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Honorable, is it true? But uh, first of all, ask, <laughs> are there movements within Karamoja? No, Honorable, is it true? <laughs> they have deployed. Charles, I'm asking a question. To, uh, not to, to a big extent. Not to a big extent. So it's not sufficient. It's not sufficient. Can I ask a question, Honorable? Mm. Are, mo are there movements within Karamoja region? Movements in terms of... Uh, People moving. <laughs> People are moving <laughs> at daytime, <laughs> at okay. night. 
people struggle to move. No, you have answered my question. The last time I was in a park, just about a week ago, in my neighborhood, my home where I live, criminal elements came to my neighbor, a, a village woman, a old woman. And then they told her, ah, grandma, you go back to your house. We had raided your home the other time. You just imagine. That is why I say we have accepted criminals to take over. Mm. So if she they, had no cows to raid. There was nothing more to be raided. Even, even the utensils had been taken already. So okay. they told her, Grandma, you go back to the house. We had come back. We had come to your place the other day. <laughs> that, that level of courage in my neighborhood where I live, the human MP. That level what of boldness. That level of boldness. Honorable, honorable Isn't Mapenduzi. it taking over? Honorable, we are now uh, coming to an end, and I need uh, just uh, Honorable Mapenduzi, and then maybe we we wind um, up. I think I I agree with Honorable Faith when she says, uh, and also um, uh, General. I think one one uh, viewer also mm. raises mm. similar thing. I think it is time we make this discussion not only a discussion for Karamoja. I have seen even in Parliament, um, I have seen now leaders from the affected areas struggle to make sure people pay attention to this. Yes. Leaders from Karamoja struggle and, and, and we, we need to recognize that. I have seen leaders from Acholi mm. uh, and Teso. I think this should be taken as a national crisis that needs to be addressed. Uh, number two, we need to know how much impact it's creating, not only on Uganda, but East Africa. Actually, statistics shows that East Africa is losing about $27 million yearly to cattle wrestling. About $27 million. So when you see poverty getting taller day by day in Karamoja, that's the impact. But the other thing that needs to be in, in um, uh, general this 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 is for you and the the you know and our army. I don't think we should allow this kind of lawlessness to continue in this country. Because you cannot allow people just get killed. We, so, we are pacifying this standard. I see why not Karamuji? You see this 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 thing and, and, and again sometimes I have a problem with people who want to turn this matter into the ordinary debate. There are people when they come mm. to talk about it, mm. they are talking about this and they are running away from it. The, the, bigger, the bigger part of, of the matter is that people are being killed by criminals and these criminals Massage. should not in exactly. any way be massaged. Exactly. And when they are being, when they are being handled, family, everyone needs to support. Okay. Otherwise, we, we create an environment where we, we, get, we get consumed in the debate whether this approach is right, this is a, and, and then people are civil society, politicians, and people are, we begin to fight one Ourselves. another. Okay. So I think that needs to be addressed. Thank you very much. Um, I, the show has not yet ended, and uh, um, we are, uh, but we, are, we want to end it on a good, sh on a good note, and uh, we, my team, the producers, on instructions of, uh, of the Managing Director of UBC would want to congratulate Sarah. Dr. Sarah. Dr. Sarah. <laughs> and uh, there are they are ladies who have been deployed to bring the cake here. Um, there is a cake to cut. Wow. Um, please bring it. And uh, wow. who is going to I, lead I, I, in I there? Have, I will see the Dr. Yoga one around. <laughs> <laughs> please hurry with the cake. Now Time you need to know, to Sarah. Finish. Um, <laughs> uh, please bring the cake. The Sarah is being congratulated um, by the I, entire I think, team of UBC. Uh, I think it's befitting to use yeah. this. I think it's befitting to use this too. team yes. of behind the headlines. <laughs> yeah. um, our our MD, Mr. Agawa, um, Winston, and. Uh, 
and the deputy md morris and uh, our man marketing manager william odoch have prepared i don't know what the what size of the cake it is uh but they have prepared eh. Sarah, you, you thought I was even, wow. You thought I was spreading this, this wow. seems to be um, so viewers. The last time we cut a cake, we were celebrating the birthday of Gobi. <laughs> and then let, next time we cut a cake, we were congratulating Gobi for being appointed a, a permanent secretary, uh, secretary to treasury. Now the next cake is for for Sarah who who has uh, stood with this show from the beginning and uh, has uh, now achieved big for this country for herself for the family but uh, we for us as behind the headlines we are part of that uh, that uh, happiness so sarah has uh, is 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 stepping forward general Honorable Faith, Honorable Mapenduzi, Sarah will have to pay me later because where else would she get a, a forum whereas she, she, she is accompanied by three MPs just in one sitting to help her in cutting a cake if it was not for behind the headlines? You know, you know uh, uh, James, one time. Charles. Uh, oh, Charles, rather. Yeah. Uh, one time, uh, a gentleman called James. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, at a similar kind of uh, event. Yeah. And he gave us a very strong one. Yes. He finished his PhD. And yeah. he said, if you know, you're not going to finish your PhD, don't, don't even attempt to attack my PhD. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad one. So, <laughs> so that warning is to all of us here. To whom are you, now whom are you warning? No. <laughs> the rest of us. Now, now all of you are just one step to a PhD. We, we need to know how much sacrifices Sarah made to reach this far. And, and as we enjoy, we need to think about General, it. now you can start, start thinking of a PhD. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I will heed his warning. <laughs> I will not touch the cake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, I'm going to invite all of you to step forward with Sarah, who is now a PhD holder, decked in her full armor. Uh, you see her there. And uh, to cut the cake. And uh, yes, join, join in cutting the cake with her. For us, we are just going to celebrate from the side by taking pictures. Ah. Three, two, one and God. zero. Oh. There is no person. Congratulations. 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 Yes, so a massive congratulations from the team at uh, Behind the Headlines, and uh, we are all happy. Thank you. Thank yes, you so thank you so much. Thank you. And, and Dr. Sarah, thank you very much for inspiring the culture. This is quite encouraging. Thank you. The rest, the rest of you on uh, on uh, on watching on TV in your bedrooms, I will eat on your behalf. <laughs> but that has been the watching from the sitting room. From the sitting room. Yes. That's okay. some even on phone uh -huh. uh, in their cars. <laughs> but I will eat on the, on their yeah, behalf. Correct. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Until next week, I want to thank uh, the entire production team and those of you who view us until next week bye bye N now we can sit and start with Airtel Money Quick Loans. Get a top-up loan when you have insufficient funds to buy airtime, pay utility bills, or make payments at a local supermarket. Complete your transaction and pay later. Dial star 185 star 7 star 10 hash to opt-in. Get an Airtel Money Quick Loan and pay later. Choose our with Airtel Money Quick Loans in partnership with Housing Finance Bank and powered by Yabex. Airtel, the smartphone network. Join us from Monday to Friday for Good Morning Uganda with me, Felix Mukona. Robert Chirabo. Molen Kenyela. Ruben Mpimba. With all the morning's essentials. Including the very latest in news. 
traffic, weather and sports. Hope you'll be setting your alarms because we are looking forward to seeing you then. This is Good Morning Uganda. Fully cleared of the nationalist Ukrainian Azov Battalion. More than 1,000 Marines defending the port are reported to have surrendered. The ministry also claims sabotage attempts and strikes by Ukrainian troops on Russian territory have intensified. The MOD has warned if they continue, strikes will be made on decision making centers, including Kiev. Now, Vladimir Putin has warned that Russia can easily redirect its energy exports to countries that need them. The president added that while Western countries are suffering from rising prices and inflation, Moscow has, quotes, alternative options. The refusal of a number of Western countries from having normal cooperation, including Russian energy resources, has already hit millions of Europeans, provoking a real energy crisis. This is also reflected in the U.S. prices, and inflation is rising everywhere. That is unprecedented for these countries. Of course, we also face problems, but we have alternative options, and new opportunities are opening up for us. As for oil, gas and coal, we will be able to increase their consumption in the domestic market, stimulate deep processing of raw materials, as well as increase the supply of resources to other regions of the world, to where they are really needed. Meanwhile, the head of Germany's federal network agency, which oversees the country's energy needs, recently claimed that if Russian gas supplies are cut by Berlin, Germany's reserves will only last until the autumn. We discuss the prospects of Europe's future without Russian energy supplies with a panel of guests. Economies collapse, unemployment rises, uh, supply chains um, disintegrate, and shops start to get empty. Germany uh, will not be able to make up for this uh, in 